Hey everybody, how's it going? My name is Fitzhogan11. Welcome to a different kind of video today. Uh, we will be predicting and uh, previewing the European International VGC 17 uh, Championships. This is uh, one of the most hype uh, tournaments in Pokemon history, in my eyes, uh, since the scene has grown so much in the recent past. Uh, and um, the unpredictable nature of this event, uh, seeing that it's so new, uh, into Pokemon Sun and Moon is going to bring more viewership and bring more exciting battles overall. Uh, so just as a quick aside, if you are unfamiliar with VGC or the VGC 17 uh, rule set in general, uh, VGC you have a team of six um, and when you are in team preview against uh, an opponent you bring uh, four of your Pokemon, uh, you fight two at a time, uh, 2v2 battles, uh, that's the main gist of it. Uh, in VGC 17, uh, you can only use Pokemon that can be found in Aloha, Aloha, uh, and Mega Stones are not allowed. Those are the biggest rules. Uh, you also cannot bring. Um, you can bring the Tapus and you can bring Ultra Beasts, but you can't bring uh, any of the Super Legendaries or whatever you want to call um, or event uh, Legendaries, and. Um, then the new rules that are coming into effect is timers. Uh, you have 10 minutes to make moves uh, in total. Uh, so you, it is different this year in that uh, there isn't just a timer counting down uh, from 15 minutes or whatever it was before. Yep, so that is the uh, main rule set for VGC 17 in general. I might have thrown in a few uh, rules uh, on the overlay if I missed any. Um, but what makes the European International Championships uh, this weekend so exciting is that it is the first major championship uh, uh, for this year's uh, rule set uh, and for Sun and Moon. Uh, so a lot of people are going to be watching, uh, it's eyeing teams that they can uh, possibly use in the future, uh, as well as finding some new strategies and some new uh, ideas. Um, for their teams. And this tournament will also be incredibly interesting uh, in terms of the prize money. Uh, prize money has been uh, kind of uh, a huge thing that was talked about in recent years and uh, Pokemon Company is taking a step in the right direction, at least some people think, uh, for this year uh, in terms of how prize money is divvied up. Um, and uh, it depends on how many people enter the tournament. Um, but the prize money uh, for people who win or are at least in the top eight about uh, are much higher than they ever were uh, since in the past uh, almost all tournaments uh, you didn't make any money at all. So uh, that's a huge um, plus for um, making this game more competitive, uh, getting people to not think of it as a casual eSport anymore, uh, but actually as uh, something that's competition. Um, kind of in likeness with chess, maybe, you could say. Uh, it probably won't reach the CSGO or League of Legends statuses uh, in the esports community, but we'll see. I guess only time will tell. Um, but without further ado, we'll get into 10 predictions uh, for this event. Uh, let me know if you guys uh, agree with any of them or they're just flat out stupid. So uh, coming in at number 10, uh, something that's a positive uh, coming out of VGC 17 in general, uh, but I, it will start at this event, is that there will be a lack of hack accusations. Uh, so in recent, probably just the past year, I would say, uh, maybe two years, uh, there has been a lot of um, hate in our community uh, regarding hacked Pokemon, uh, the use of external devices to create your Pokemon. Uh, it's been fueled by one person that uh, we shall not speak of, but everyone knows who I'm talking about. Um, but in VGC 17, uh, while external devices may still be used, and probably will be, um, it is so easy to uh, have any kind of Pokemon you want now uh, and train them up, breed them. It's very easy uh, in Generation 7. You can hyper-train your Pokemon, uh, you can capture Shinies uh, that in the past wouldn't have been useful at all, uh, and hyper-train them and their uh, monsters at this point. Uh, and as an aside, um, Professor Oak, 
our new friend in the Aloha region, gives you a ton of Pokeballs that are usually not accessible. They were accessible in Gen 4 uh, from Russell. That was his name, right? Uh, the Pokeball Master. Uh, so things like Love Balls and uh, Friend Balls, all that kind of stuff, are now accessible. Uh, so any Pokemon can have them. Nobody's going to be complaining about male Pokemon uh, passing down their ball or anything like that. I don't know if Dream Balls are available. I guess that could still be an issue if someone tried to pull that off. Um, but that would be an illegal Pokemon, I guess, until Pokemon Bank, unless uh, I haven't seen them around. So... Uh, let me know if I'm wrong on that. But it's a good thing for the community. Uh, more talk will be focused on the actual competition, and less talk, uh, which there was a lot of talk, uh, will be focused on uh, hacked Pokemon. So uh, coming in at number nine, there are going to be Weather Wars this year. I didn't expect it, um, but uh, I wasn't spoiling myself early in the year. Uh, early in this Pokemon year, and uh, soon I found out that Pelipper and Torkoal now have hit, uh, regular abilities, uh, Drizzle and Drought, uh, and Ninetales also has Snow Warning, um, so although the typical Obama Snows, um, Politoed is available, um, but Ninetales' uh, regular form is not available for the Sun, um, didn't think that Weather Wars would be a thing in this generation, um, but Torkoal has proven to be a huge monster early on in uh, VGC. Uh, thanks a lot to Cybertron, uh, his use of it with Aragnaru, um, as well as others. A lot of people had those sets. Um, but uh, it'll be interesting to see if Pelipper becomes a hard counter for Torkoal, uh, or if... Um, People will have new ideas, uh, whether they're skill swapping or red carding, uh, to figure out how to reset weather. Uh, so that will be very interesting uh, at this event, since there will be a lot of high-level players. Coming in at number eight, uh, I believe that this, um, at least for the finals of this tournament, uh, will make the front page of Twitch. Uh, now, I don't have exact numbers on how uh, streams have done in the past. Um, I guess Worlds has probably done much better than some of these international, uh, national tournaments. Um, but although there is going to be a big CSGO competition uh, this weekend, and I'm sure there's always League of Legends stuff, um, I believe that there will be a time where uh, Pokemon uh, tournament will be front page Twitch, which is really good uh, for the community and uh, should drive a lot of hype and a lot of new viewership. Uh, coming in at number seven, um, a lot of focus has been on the Tapus this year. Um, you see them on screen right now. Uh, but there hasn't been a huge focus on the terrain wars in general uh, and how important it is to have the right terrain up in a given time. Uh, most of the terrains protect uh, common statuses as long as you're on the ground uh, and that sort of thing. But they also power up psychic moves, grass moves, and electric moves. Uh, for some reason, the water fairy thing doesn't power up its moves, um, but uh, that's okay, I guess. Uh, it'll probably that thing will probably be used as a tank later on in the season, but it probably won't even see it at this tournament, really. Um, but regardless, uh, you will see terrain wars, and it will be important to keep your terrain up as long as possible, uh, and maybe reset it towards the end of the game uh, to get wins. Uh, so. Stay in touch with that, uh, try to look into that, and uh, it'll be as important as Weather Wars uh, at this tournament. Uh, number six, players will stick with what they know, and uh, I believe they will be avoiding most of the new mons besides the Ultra Beast and the Tapus. Uh, you won't see a ton of um, the new bug, mo uh, bug types. Uh, you won't see Oricorio. Uh, you will see a Ragnaru. Um, and uh, things like um, the Jellyfish Mon, I'll have it on screen, has uh, basically a huge power ability for its water moves, which is really good uh, on the physical and special side. Um, but you probably won't see a ton of it uh, since it doesn't have the best stats. People will stick with what they know. Garchomp, Gyarados, uh, Intimidate users like Gyarados, Crocodile, um, Arcanine, you might even see Tauros, who knows, um, with Intimidate. Um, but people will want to uh, not uh, be too unique, uh, so they will stick to what has worked in past VGC tournaments and uh, try to make that work and see if they can do it. 
Uh, coming in at number five, this is my boldest prediction uh, of the ten. I believe a water grass pledge team will make it to the final eight. Now in the past, pledge moves haven't been uh, very good at all, and that is mainly based on uh, most starters being physical. Uh, you can look at most generations, uh, maybe besides first, um, and see Pokemon that tend to be physical hitters. Um, at least have two physical hitters. Uh, so in this generation, um, while uh, the grass type, um, grass ghost thingy, uh, is mainly physical, uh, what is beneficial about it is that it can hit, uh, it is faster than uh, its counterpart water and fire types, uh, so it can get off a grass pledge move and then allow a fire or water pledge uh, to come in second at a much harder hit. Um, and the special attack of the water starter is actually really insane. Uh, so it could be a interesting uh, combo, combo move to use. Uh, the huge benefit of this is that it creates a swamp uh, for four moves, which halves the other team's uh, speed. Um, so it's basically like a free tailwind, and speed control is really important in this generation, although the meta in general is uh, towards the slower end. Uh, speed is still the most important stat, and uh, finding different ways uh, to control speed is incredibly important. Um, and although we've seen mostly Trick Room, and maybe we'll see Tailwind from things like Pelipper, and maybe even Talonflame, Flame Body Talonflame, um, maybe this is a way to a new way to uh, control speed. Coming in at number four, uh, Tapu Lele and Torkoal will struggle mightily in this tournament. Uh, now, they are great Pokemon, um, but these are the two Pokemon that we've seen uh, kill it in the recent past, uh, in online, in, from YouTube, Showdown, everything. You can see that these t two Pokemon are monsters, and if you're going to this tournament, you're going to know uh, you'll be seeing them and you have to counter them and people are going to be ready for it and have strategies to beat them uh, at least one or two mines dedicated to killing Tapu Lele and uh, probably a strategy to uh, at least dampen the effects of Torkoal. Uh, number three, I mentioned it before, uh, Intimidate users will run wild. There are a lot of them this year. Uh, most of them are oldies but goodies, uh, especially Gyarados will uh, have a lot of play, maybe paired with Marowak, um, but Crocodile will also have a lot of uh, Intimidate success, and Arcanine will probably have a little bit. Um, so my Lodic is definitely a counter uh, to get the competitive boost. I think Wigglytuff is also available, um, but other than that, I don't know if there's any Defiant mods. Uh, you'll see it on screen if there are. Um, at number two, uh, someone's Mon will just hate them and it will hurt their returns in the tournament. Uh, someone will forget to train up uh, exactly right or have a move missing. Something will go wrong uh, where their Pokemon uh, will backstab them in the complete wrong time. Uh, so we always see that. Uh, we saw it a lot with Kangaskhan. Uh, was either frustrated with it or uh, didn't love it for some reason. So, uh, coming in at number one, uh, Japan will have a return to prominence uh, in VGC 16. Uh, it didn't seem like the Japanese community was either interested in the uh, strange format. Uh, we'll go with strange. It was unique, uh, but uh, there was no real interest or they just weren't um, up for it. Something. Um, you didn't really see at Worlds, although it was in the United States, you didn't see uh, many top Japan players uh, get very far. And uh, this year, uh, even though it is a tournament in London, uh, you will see a at least a couple in the top eight uh, Japanese players. Uh, that'll be my bold prediction. Uh, and you'll probably see a few U.S. players too. Um, Europeans will probably have about half of the top spots. So uh, it'll be interesting to see how this tournament shakes out. I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, let me know if you like the length of this prediction uh, video, if you like it at all, uh, and let me know. I'll see you guys in the next episode, and if you guys like it, uh, maybe you'll see another, uh, some more of these videos in the future. Thank you. Bye-bye.